Hey everyone, Nick Marzinski here at TrappingLight.com. In previous Lightroom tutorials, I focused on the basic panel, which is this panel right here in Lightroom's develop module. So I'm in the develop module, this is the basic panel. And from there, I'm going to move into talking about the next panel on the list, which is the tone curve panel. Now I have to be honest, within Lightroom this isn't a panel that I use terribly often. However, it can be very useful not only to fine tune contrast effects, but also to create some proce uh, cross processed or color tinted looks as well. So I'm in Lightroom, I'm in the develop module, and this is the tone curve um, basic uh, tone curve panel, which is located right below the basic panel. Now you see that I've got both of them open, but if I open up all these panels, that can use up a lot of real estate, and generally I'm only going to be using one panel at a time. So Lightroom has this really great feature in it where if you right click on one of the on the header of the panel, you can see that there's this solo mode right here. If I click on that, then only the panel that I'm using is active. So if I switch back to the basic panel, the basic panel opens and the tone curve panel closes. So that's a really useful feature to just keep your um, sidebar here very uncluttered. Okay, so within the tone curve tool, there's actually two different windows. One of them allows you to adjust the tone curve uh, by region using these sliders that you've got down here. So you can adjust the highlights, the lights, the darks, and the shadows. Um, the other one allows you to adjust the tone curve by actually setting and dragging points. And you can switch between the two by clicking on this button right here in the lower right hand side of the panel. So if I click on it, you can see that it switches between the two. For the rest of the tutorial, I'm going to actually be using this point curve tool right here as opposed to the one with the sliders because the point curve tool is actually much more powerful than the other one. So this is the more powerful tone curve of the two that you've got available to you. So. Here we are, this is the point curve tool, and this is usually where people get intimidated by this tool because there's really no sliders here or anything to tell you about how the tool works. There's just this window and that's, that's pretty much it. But once you understand what's going on with this tool, making adjustments to an image actually becomes very intuitive. Basically, the tone curve tool allows you to make specific adjustments to the brightness levels of your image. And it's laid out like this. The horizontal axis, this x-axis, this bottom one right here, corresponds to the tonal values of your image before you make any edits. Okay, So you can see here in a lighter gray, I've got my image histogram and it's compressed within this entire um, tone curve here. And if you've watched my tutorial on the histogram, you know that it stretches from absolute black on the left to absolute white on the right. Okay, and that's what we've got here. So the absolute left hand side of this graph corresponds to absolute black on the image. And the absolute right hand side of the graph corresponds to absolute white on the image. So that's how this bottom axis, this horizontal axis works. Let's talk about the vertical axis. This axis here corresponds to the brightness values of the image after applying a tone curve edit. As with the horizontal axis, the values stretch from absolute black on the bottom to absolute white up on the top, okay? But now it's just a little bit different. Instead of being left to right, now it's bottom to top, black to white, okay? And if you want to think about, about it another way, this horizontal axis represents the shadows, the midtones, and the highlight portions of your image. And the vertical axis represents how bright or dark you want those various tonal portions of your image to be. So here's this line running across the window from the lower left hand corner to the upper right hand corner. And this line determines how the original tonal values on this axis map to the brightness values that you want them to on this axis. Okay, And right now this line is a 45 degree linear line. Each tonal value on the bottom here is mapped to its exact same brightness value um, over here on the left. So if we draw an imaginary line say from the center right here up to the line and then over you can see that both the x-axis and the y-axis both the horizontal and the vertical correspond to the same line but now let's change the shape of the curve so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the curve and I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to drag it down and the image becomes darker well why is that well, if we do the same thing that we did before and we trace an imaginary line from the bottom to the line, to the tone line that we've got here, and then trace it over, 
you can see what happens. We can see that was a, what was originally a mid-tone in this image now is a much darker, uh, correspondingly darker value on, on this brightness axis here. Okay, so when we do this and we move it below the linear, everything in the image gets darker. If we do it in, in reverse, however, and move everything above the linear dotted line here, now everything gets brighter because each tonal point on this axis here is mapped to a correspondingly brighter point here. So if I go with a midtone, trace it up, all of a sudden my midtone now is somewhere in the highlights. And so that's the reason why everything in the image is brighter. So at this point, you might be looking at this and going, well, that's, that's great, but who really cares? Let me just reset this. Actually, I'm going to reset it to linear. Um, who cares? That's fine. So you can make one point and drag it. But I can do brightness adjustments just like this with the exposure slider in the basic panel. So why bother using the tone curve? And if this is the only way that you're using the tone curve, then you're right. A one point adjustment on the tone curve, just making one point and, and manipulating one point isn't necessarily all that exciting. But let's try it with two points. What I'm going to do right now, I've reset it to a linear curve by clicking on here and clicking on linear. Is I'm going to add a point in the shadows down here and I'm going to drag it down just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to add a point in the highlights up here, and I'm going to drag it up just a little bit. So I'm going to drag it just above the linear line. Okay, and this is what's called an S curve, okay, because it looks a little bit like an S. And instantly my image is a bit more dramatic. Okay, this is before and this is after. So before and after, and it, it makes the image pop a bit. So why does it do that? Well, this has to do with contrast. When I've dragged the shadow point, down here, I'm making the darker tones of my image even darker. And when I'm dragging this highlights point up, I'm making all of the lighter tones of my image brighter. So what it's doing is it's taking my histogram and it's actually stretching it out. And that's really how contrast works. If we turn it off and turn it back on, you can see exactly what's happening with the histogram up here. It's actually getting stretched out the same way that we saw it, it being stretched out with the contrast slider. Okay. And, and, and really that's how contrast works. It just stretches out your histogram. Okay. But if we want to think about it in terms of what we're seeing here on the tone curve, the steeper the tone curve, the steeper the portions of the tone curve that we've got here, the more contrast we've got. Okay. So, in this case, I've increased the contrast in the midtones by making the, the, the tone curve steeper in this section. If I do it even more, I'm adding even more contrast and I'm stretching out my histogram even more. Okay. And to be honest, you can do it this way, but Lightroom actually gives you a couple of S curves right out of the gate in this drop down menu right here. You've got a medium contrast, which just gives you a little bit of pop from the linear. So this is linear. This is medium contrast, which just gives you a little bit of pop. And then this is strong contrast, which gives you even more pop to your image. And both of these options are actually pretty good options if you're interested in using the tone curve to add contrast to your image. But there's more to it than that. In the upper left-hand corner of the panel here, there's this little circular icon, and this is what's called the targeted adjustment tool. If I click on it and then go into my image and run the mouse over the image, if you look at the tone curve here while I'm doing that, you can see all of these points over here on the curve that are appearing on the curve. So what Lightroom is telling me is it's telling me where each brightness point that I run my mouse over is on the tone curve. So if I get to a point where I want to make an edit, I can click and then drag up to make that area brighter or drag down to make it darker. So if I look at my daughter's face here, I can click and drag up and it's going to make her face brighter. On the other hand, maybe I want to make her hair a little bit darker so that I click on her hair and I drag it down and it's making her hair darker. Okay, so this allows you to independently select points right on your image and then change the contrast, change what we see in those points, change the brightness in those points. Okay, and this provides you a much finer degree of control than you get with the contrast slider. With the contrast slider, you just drag it to the right to increase contrast, but but that's really about it. You're not actually mapping, you're not actually working with individual tones in the image that you want to brighten or darken. With the tone curve, you're able to do that. You're able to add almost as many points as you want. I think that the, the max you can add is somewhere around 20 points. 
but you can pick your points wherever you want them to be on your image and then make these brightness adjustments right to those points as, as, as easily as clicking and dragging up or down. So this sounds like a pretty awesome feature, right? But remember that at the beginning of this tutorial, I mentioned that I actually didn't really use the tone curve very much here in Lightroom. So if, if this feature is so great, this ability to be able to just click on points and then adjust the brightness is so great, why don't I use it? Well, here's the problem with using the tone curve. And I'm going to reset it back to linear just as a starting point. If I give myself an S curve, so I drag down my shadows and I drag up my highlights, you can see that I'm indeed adding contrast to my midtones. This tone curve is steeper here. Steeper means more contrast, so it's steeper than it is linear. So I'm adding more contrast to my midtones. But that midtone contrast, that increase in midtone contrast comes with a cost. With an, with an S curve like this, the midtones are more contrasty, but unfortunately, my extreme highlights and my extreme shadows, I've actually reduced the contrast in those areas. I've made the tone curve flatter in those areas. And flatter curves mean less contrast. If I drag this like this and I drag that like that, what you can see is, is that I'm effectively taking, this is making the curve flatter in the midtone section. I'm effectively taking contrast out. Okay? So by making a change to the contrast anywhere in the image, by increasing contrast, anywhere in the image, I've got to decrease contrast somewhere else in the image. Okay, and that's a problem. And with a tone curve like this in Lightroom, this is a, a global adjustment, meaning that it affects the whole image. I can't independently say, okay, I want to apply this particular tone curve to her face, and a different tone curve to her jacket, and a different tone curve to her, uh, to the background, or anything like that, or to her hair. I, ca I can't do that in Lightroom. It gives me this one tone curve to work with. And that's the reason why I don't like using it. I love working with tone curves. I think that they're great tools, and they're very, very flexible. However, for them to really work well, the best place to do it, actually, is to work right within Photoshop, either Photoshop Creative Suite or Photoshop Creative Cloud. Unfortunately, one of the things that Photoshop Elements doesn't have is a curve adjustment layer. So if I want to work with curves on this image, I can certainly do it within Lightroom, but a better way to do it actually is to go up here to Photo, go to Edit In, go to Edit In Photoshop Creative Suite or Creative Cloud, click the button, it's going to take this image, dump it right over to Photoshop, and just give it a second here to load, and now that it's in here, what I can do is I can go down to my Add Adjustment Layer, click on Curves, and I get this exact same sort of thing. So I can make an S curve, drag it down, or drag it and drag it up. Or I can, for example, make another curve, grab this tool here, which is this targeted adjustment tool, same as it worked uh, the same way as it worked in Lightroom, and I can go onto her face and I can say, okay, I'm gonna actually want to make her face brighter. And then I can control I to invert the mask on that particular curve, grab my brush tool by pressing B, and then apply that curve, that brightness curve, just to her face by making sure that my foreground color over here is set to white. So I'm going to press D to get my default my default colors up of black and white, make my foreground color white by pressing X until it's the, the top one, and then just paint it on with a brush. And now I can paint on individual tone curves wherever I want in the image. If I want to affect her hair, I can make another curve, grab my targeted adjustment tool, run it around and go, okay, I'm going to place a point here. I'm going to place a point there because that's definitely both in her hair. And then I'm just going to simply straighten those out. It makes her hair more contrasty. I don't like where it's doing everywhere else. I invert it. Grab my brush tool by pressing B and then just simply paint the contrast right here onto her hair. So I can very, very closely and very, very quickly make these tonal curve adjustments, which are really, really great and very, very targeted, but I can target them even more within Photoshop by using layer masks. Furthermore, I can also use a blend mode. If I don't like what it's doing to the color in her hair and making it yellow here, I can change the blend mode on this tone curve to luminosity. 
and that's going to get rid of the color cast that it's, that it's using on the image. And so curves are a great tool and you have the ability to use them within Lightroom. However, unfortunately, for the, what they give you in Lightroom is a global adjustment. You can only do it once. You can't mask it. You can't um, change any sort of blend modes. And so for the purposes of using a curve, if you're planning on doing it, you certainly can within Lightroom, but a much better way to use tone curves is within Photoshop Creative Suite or Creative Cloud because you have much more control over how those curves work. So that's it for the RGB tone curve. What I haven't talked about yet is that in addition to being able to edit contrast, these curves can also be used to edit color and introduce color effects. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to be talking all about that because actually to introduce a cross-processed effect within Lightroom uh, it is very, very easy to do with a tone curve. And that's actually one of the ways that I do use a tone curve in Lightroom is to actually affect colors in the individual color channels, the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel. However, that's for next time. In the meantime, I hope this tutorial has demystified how a tone curve works for you. So have fun playing with S-curves in your image, and as always, thanks for watching.